Well, now to an absolutely wonderful story about a bloke I've never heard of before and I can't understand how this is. He's a Japanese inventor and photographer and a storekeeper who uh, well, he had an extraordinary life. He, he worked in Darwin in the 1930s, but that's sort of late in his life. His name is Yasukichi Murakami. He was born in Japan in 1880. He moved to Australia when he was just 17. He lived in Broome for a while, where he became a storekeeper. He had an extraordinary rich life. He even invented a kind of diving suit while he was there. But then he comes to Darwin. This is in the 30s. And he started photographing people. He photographed soldiers and scientists, everyday people, Darwin's elite. And this went on until the bombing of Pearl Harbour, when he, along with the rest of the Chinese community there, uh, was interned as an enemy alien. Now, his story entranced a Japanese-Australian photographer and playwright named Mayu Kanamori, and she set out on a quest to discover this man's photographs. She's also written a play about him, which is called Yasukichi Marukami Through a Distant Lens, and it opens tonight at the Darwin Festival. Books and Arts Daily's Georgia Moody is in Darwin for the festival. Where are you, Georgia? I'm in front of 33 Kavanagh Street, one of the main roads in Darwin. And this site was really significant in the life of Japanese photographer Yasukichi Murakami. It's a beautiful old building. It was built in 1888. It's made of stone and there's a big corrugated iron veranda held up by these thick wooden veranda posts. And this building is very lucky to be here. It survived both the 1942 bombing of Darwin and the devastation wrought by Cyclone Tracy in 1974. With me is Mayu Kunamori, a Japanese-Australian photographer herself and a playwright. Mayu, thanks for speaking to Books and Arts Daily. Thank you very much for having me on your program. And also with us are performers Arisa Yura and Kuni Hashimoto, who are performing in the play you've written, Mayu, which is called Yasukichi Murakami Through a Distant Lens. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much. Mayu, why was this building significant for Yasukichi Murakami? Well, the stone houses is where Yasukichi Murakami, before uh, World War II, had settled, and he had a studio and his home in this building. And when the war started, the day after the Japanese bombing of Pearl Harbor, Yasukichi Murakami and his family uh, were arrested from this, their home studio here. Murakami arrived in Australia, in, in Western Australia, at, in Kosak, in 1897 at the age of 16 and from there he moved to Broome and then in the 1930s he's, he moved to Darwin. Kuni, you play the role of Yasukichi Murakami in the play. Murakami wasn't always a photographer. What other work did he do after he arrived in Australia? He came to Australia to look for gold initially and become clerk of the shop and then learned photography. But he did a uh, culture power business and also running the hotel and also invented new diving dress, diving suits now, but these days they call diving dress. So, so they tried to do many things. Mayu, was there a big Japanese population here in the top end in the early 20th century? Yes, Darwin had a large Asian community, both Japanese as well as uh, Chinese peoples and also people from Indonesia and Timor. As a matter of fact, a lot of the progress of Darwin, and not only Darwin but the Australian North, has been working together between the Japanese people and the other Asian people, the Aboriginal people and also the colonial people who were here. And together they had really built the northern part of Australia. And it's that history where white fellas, black fellas and yellow fellas work together that I'd like to uncover in the story. And how did you come across this story of Yasukichi Murakami? Many years ago I was in Broome, 1998 it was, and I was actually photographing portraits of Japanese and Aboriginal mixed-blooded people one of whom, whilst I was photographing her, she said, my great-grandfather was actually a Japanese-Australian photographer. And that was the first I heard of Yasuki Murakami. And um, his name had been in my mind ever since, thinking, hey, there's this guy, you know, also from Japan, like me, who had photographed history of Australia. And that, that's basically what I had been doing. 
It took me a while to start researching, and once I've started researching, I was hooked. Kuni, what was Yasukichi Murakami's life in Darwin like? <laughs> I think it's just, he was very happy in the Darwin because it's a uh, power business that didn't work well in Broome, so that's why he moved to Darwin and he concentrated on uh, photographing and with his family. And uh, I think he had a very happy time uh, in Darwin until the beginning of the World War II. And Mayo, I understood he photographed the elite of Darwin. Yes, Kichi Murakami had varied photographic clients. He photographed the local football team. He photographed scientists. He was also involved in photographing the Darwin mobile forces. There was a build-up of troops in Darwin at the time, and they all needed photographs to send back home. And so he had a, quite a successful business. He was also connected with Darwin's elite because of his business dealings with Captain Ansel Gregory. And because of that, he had a good life. He was invited to parties at Government House and lived a fancy life here. Now, as you've said, the turning point in his story was, of course, uh, World War II. What happened to him during World War II? The troops arrived at his house here, where we stand today, and um, his whole family was arrested, as with all Japanese in Australia on that day. And they were, uh, well, in the case of Yasukichi Murakami and the Japanese in Darwin, they were taken on a truck to Adelaide River, and from there on a ship to Sydney, and then a train from Sydney to Tatura in Victoria, where they were held behind barbed wires in an internment camp. Yasukichi Murakami died there in 1944, so he never got to see Darwin again. However, his family later on came out of internment camp and finally settled back in Darwin. So his descendants live here today. Arisa, you actually play the role of Mayu in this play. How is Mayu's story weaved into the story of Murakami's life? Well, Mayu Kanamori-san, uh, as a photographer uh, in this modern day, um, did look for this, these missing photographs of Yasukichi Murakami. So the story is based on the quest and her journey of finding these missing photographs, which sort of turns into and it sort of manifests into something else and something much more than just finding his photographs but finding the history of all the Japanese that lived there and all the, all the stories that we can all relate to as people. Something a bit bigger than just finding something that's materialistic. So the themes of love and family and the relationships that he had. The first day of war, the day after the Japanese bombing of Pearl Harbor, as with all Japanese in Australia, Murakami Yasukichi was arrested, an enemy alien interned. In our national archives, there's a record of the list of items that he had in his home. It was handed over to the authorities. There is no mention of Murakami's photographs or his negatives. What happened to his photographs and where are they now? Through a Distant Lens is a multimedia work. Tell me about the other elements that come into this play. Well, Yasukichi Murakami, Through a Distant Lens, is a theatre play in a sense that there is a dramatic narrative and actors playing their parts. However, it's much more than that. It has live music by Terumi Narushima, who is also our sound designer. Also, it is a very, very visually rich play in a sense that there are many, many, over 150 still images being used, both uh, photographs that I have taken, but of course the photographs of Yasukichi Murakami. And there's a little bit of dancing from our actors, too. <laughs> I'm singing. <laughs> <laughs> so how many of his photographs still survive? I would say roughly a couple of hundred that I have found. But I believe that there are many, many more out there. They're just not attributed to him. Many of the photographs we see now of Darwin and Broome during the time, although it may not have his so-called byline on it, they carry with it definite traces of that which looked like Yasukichi's eyes. One of the um, 
very important aspects of our performance is that we have, um, well, I have interviewed people that remember Yasukichi Murakami's photographs or remember him. Also his descendants, including one of his sons. And um, one of the interviews that I did was in Broome, Western Australia. There is a woman there called Pearl Hamaguchi through her mother's storytelling remembers Yasukichi Murakami because she has photographs, portraits of her mother taken by him and uh, she shares with us her story. So mother had all these photographs, oh about six of them I think I have all together. I said mama you got these lovely portraits, how did you possibly, you know you were just a poor servant, oh no 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 she said. When us girls would walk down to Chinatown with strict instructions from nuns not to make eye contact with the heathen Asiatics. We'd pass Murakami's photography shop and he'd be waiting for mum. Barbara, Barbara Eva, her mother's very good friend, Auntie Eva, was a beautiful woman as well. He would look out for her. Barbara, please sit for me. I want to take your portrait. I want to take your portrait. Oh, I said, what did he look like? Oh, she said he was very good looking. And I'm thinking, oh, but mother... Why didn't you go? <laughs> she said, I think he had a crush on me. That was my mother's story. May, what would you like the audience to take away from, from this play? First of all, I would like the audience to remember uh, Yasukichi Murakami through his photographs, but through all of the things he did. Secondly, I would like the audience to remember that the relationship between Japan and Australia didn't begin with the war, that there were Japanese people in Australia long before World War II and uh, we used to live side by side. I would also like people to have a little think about photography. <laughs> I'm a photographer, we take a lot of photographs, but I'd like people to understand the meaning of photography. And the story is about all of those things, but on a very deeper level, it's about memory and about unconditional love. And I would like people to think about unconditional love as well. Japanese Australian photographer and playwright Mayu Kanamori speaking there with Georgia Moody in Darwin. And we also heard the voices of actor Arisa Yura and Kuni Hashimoto and music from the show, a track called To Search for Traces by Clocks and Clouds. And the show is called uh, Yasukichi Murakami Through a Distant Lens. It's directed by Malcolm Blaylock. And uh, it's produced by my old chum, Annette Chanois. It sounds marvellous, doesn't it? It's on at the Darwin Festival tonight and tomorrow night, and then it's off to Broome. So if you're in Broome, write this down, the 5th and 6th of September, because the story is so strongly related to Broome as well. And then it travels off to the uh, Oz Asia Festival in Adelaide on the 9th and 10th of September. And there are links to all of those shows on our website.